Thank you for joining us today in this brief bite-sized learning where we will cover how to sequence viruses. I am your host, Britt Flaherty, and I'm excited to do a quick dive into the method and means of analyzing viral genomes. Before we dive into the technical details, though, I want to take a step back and talk about the ways in which next-generation sequencing has dramatically changed, for the better, our understanding of viruses and virology. When it comes to human health, NGS is the tool of choice for assessing viral genome sequencing during outbreaks. Even prior to COVID, we were deeply engaged in tracking outbreaks like Zika and Ebola. NGS provides the whole genome sequence of a virus, which allows researchers to type a strain, as in tell you which virus is present. More importantly, it allows you to identify SNPs in that viral genome that may lead to variants of interest. During the COVID pandemic, this has been paramount. Many labs are taking a subset of positive samples and sequencing the genomes of them to identify new variants and determine which variants are prevalent and spreading in a population. Another awesome benefit of NGS is that you can sequence a mix of samples that contain viruses, but also contain other microorganisms. With this, you can identify bacterial species and viral species and fungi all at once. We will discuss some great methods to do this later in the session. It has really been a complex and difficult couple of years with the global pandemic, but as a company that makes NGS technology, Illumina has been so privileged to get to be involved in a positive way in fighting SARS-CoV-2. We were at the forefront of the pandemic. The first COVID genome was sequenced on an Illumina system rapidly, and that genome assembly was then used to develop vaccines and begin the process of recovery. This was at a pace unparalleled, and it's thanks to the implementation of modern technology by dedicated scientists. As the pandemic goes on, though, surveillance has become the more important than ever. It allows monitoring and fighting outbreaks. Fortunately, viral genome surveillance is something we've done for years with other less global pandemics. Labs all around the world today are uploading sequences of the COVID genome into G GIS AID, and software tools like NextStrain are live downloading that information to allow rapid typing of genomes based on the newest global information. With this, we can identify clusters, investigate outbreaks, and significantly improve our understanding of local ep epidemiology. So if your lab or organization is interested in getting into NGS-based analysis of viral genomes, where do you begin? Well, the first question to ask is what exactly do you want to sequence? There are multiple methods available to sequence a viral genome, but each take a slightly different approach. With viral whole genome sequencing, we typically sequence an isolate that's been grown in a lab and is close to clonal. With shotgun approaches, we sequence all the DNA, that's metagenomic, or all the RNA, that's metatranscriptomic, in a sample. We assess not just the viruses, but also bacteria, fungi, and sometimes even the host organism. With enrichment, we pull out viruses and sometimes other organisms away from the host DNA or RNA. This is a sort of hybrid approach as you use less sequencing than shotgun. And finally, with Amplicon, we amplify the virus or a few regions of the virus and just sequence those. We're going to dive deeply into each of these methods, why you would use them and how to use them next. Viral whole genome sequencing was once very popular, but as the cost of sequencing has plummeted, this has become a more rarefied approach. If you have a virus and you want to identify what it is for the first time, a whole genome approach could be good. This is how SARS-CoV-2 was first sequenced. However, once it's identified, you are likely to use a shotgun or targeted approach in the future, where you sequence the virus in its natural environment in the presence of a host or other organisms. That being said, viral whole genome sequencing is very easy. You isolate the virus, extract its DNA or RNA and make cDNA, and then make a library, typically using Illumina DNA prep or for a virus with high GC or repetitive genome sequences, maybe the Illumina DNA PCR free prep. These library pet methods can be done by anyone with basic lab pipetting skills in less than three hours, and they don't require much special equipment. Once you have a library and you want to sequence it, it's easy. Viral genomes are small, in the world of DNA at least, and often require very little sequencing to cover. In general, a small benchtop sequencer like a MySeq pictured here will be plenty. To calculate how much coverage or how deeply you're sequencing the virus, you take the output of the sequencing flow cell you choose, and you divide it by the viral genome size. If you're sequencing multiple viruses at once, you divide the output of the flow cell by the sum total of the viral genome sizes. Um, and then you also need to multiply that by the number of samples if you're sequencing multiple samples at once. 
you'll likely find that your coverage will be very high, hundreds of thousands of fold for an isolated viral genome. To assemble a genome from scratch, you want to choose longer reads and use deeper coverage, like 500 volt coverage will serve you well. For resequencing though, shorter reads and lower, maybe 50 to 100 X coverage is plenty. The next type of sequencing we'll discuss is becoming very popular these days, and it's metagenomic or metatranscriptomic sequencing, or shotgun. With these methods, you take all the RNA or DNA from a sample, usually a host or the environment, and you sequence it. If the sample is from a mammalian host, you may also be sequencing the host organism. Then clever algorithms reassemble all the genomes in the sample at once. This method is also very similar to whole genome sequencing. You isolate DNA or RNA from the environmental or host sample of choice. In mammals, it's often saliva, fecal, or a swab. You turn the RNA into cDNA with a standard RT reaction, and then you prep it with the same method as the whole genome approach. The big difference here is coverage. Now you are sequencing many organisms, and perhaps even a mammal, so you need deeper coverage. Most shotgun approaches start with a certain read count, let's say 50 or 100 million reads. Once they see the data and see what they can detect, they might dial that read count up or down from there. However, we're also seeing an emergence of what are called lower pass shotgun approaches in the ballpark of a, ballpark of like a million reads a sample or less. For labs that are looking at a mix of organisms in a sample, um, much more so than looking for a rare organism, this can work. In fact, in the bacterial genomic space, this is replacing 16S surveys. Whatever you choose, we always recommend one, check the literature in your field and see what others have been using for read depth. And two, save some of your library in case you want to add more sequencing depth later. Now we'll move on to one of the most modern approaches in viral genome sequencing, enrichment. With this method, you take an environmental or host sample, isolate the DNA or the RNA, you turn it into cDNA, and then you pull out the viruses with a probe pool. These probes are long, they're about 80 base pairs or longer, and they're very flexible in what they'll nab. So if you have a virus in there that's related to another one um, or has a SNP in its genome, it's okay, it'll get pulled down as well. This method helps narrow down what you ultimately sequence and therefore saves you money on sequencing costs. Most of the enrichment panels I'll show you recommend about a million or so reads per sample. With these methods, you need a probe pool that targets your virus though. Fortunately, you can make them simply by ordering oligos that walk along your viral genome, or you can leverage a commercially available probe pool, which can usually be pretty cost effective. So let's talk about some of those pools that are available today. Many labs are using one of the three available probe pools I'm showing you today to target their viruses of interest. Keep in mind that these pools target many viruses, and while you may only be interested in one or two of their targets, they end up being cost effective compared to a custom synthesis and there's no harm in having the superfluous probes in the pool. The Respiratory Viral Oligo Panel, or RVOP, from Illumina targets the full genome of more than 40 viruses and includes targets for a positive human control. The viruses are all known respiratory viruses in humans, and the panel provides incredible sensitivity by being targeted and covering the complete genome of each virus. This is a fantastic choice for labs interested in things like SARS-CoV-2 or flu. The Respiratory Pathogen ID panel is a broader approach, great for labs looking at respiratory organisms and how they might work together. The panel covers viral, bacterial, and fungal respiratory pathogens, as well as antimicrobial resistance genes to give a complete picture. It only covers the full genome of SARS-CoV-2 and influenza. For the others, it covers spots of the genome but wouldn't be used for strain or variant detection. One nice thing about this panel is that it comes with a free report by ID by DNA that analyzes the data and tells you which organisms or AMR genes were present. Finally, TWIST has sold a large, more than a thousand viral pathogen panel for many years. It covers a wide array of viruses from many different sources. You can couple their probe pool with the Illumina DNA enrichment prep to get the highest performance. All of these panels have full target lists online. Just Google their names and you can learn more. The last and final approach we're going to talk about is actually one of the oldest, and it's amplicon sequencing. With this method, you PCR amplify a region of the known virus of interest, or you walk PCR primers along its full genome. Then you prep these amplicons into Illumina libraries. There are actually two ways to turn PCR amplicons into libraries. One is to add Illumina adapters via a second round of PCR. This method requires that your first round of PCR primers had an overhang sequence on them to prime off of 
and that your insert sizes are small, less than 500 base pairs. The second method is to prep a long PCR product into a library with Illumina DNA prep. For this method, we recommend that your PCR products have some overlap between them for optimal coverage. This is typically the favored method as it's very easy and works extremely well. Sequencing these targets is very much like sequencing a full viral genome. You need very little data to get good coverage. This methodology is what's behind many SARS-CoV-2 detection assays like COVID-seq or the Arctic protocols as it's so easy to get up and running quickly. Primers are cheap and fast, but it may not be the most sensitive and it can be difficult to maintain performance if a variant emerges that knocks out a primer. But because of its ease of use, it's quite popular. With that, I'm going to talk a little bit about a re review of your analysis options. All the methods we talked about today produce sequencing data that needs to be analyzed. But only the respiratory pathogen panel comes with a fully integrated analysis solution. However, the world of virologists and bioinformaticians have produced many pipelines you can leverage. This review from 2017 lists some of them. But at Illumina, as part of our commitment to making this easy, we are streamlining standard viral sequencing analysis tools into BaseSpace Sequence Hub. You get a 30-day free trial of BaseSpace, and you can try these easy tools um, to analyze mixed samples, reassemble genomes, or even type your virus in one simple place. Best yet, Illumina sequencers stream sequencing data straight into BaseSpace, so it's a one-stop shop for analysis and storage. That concludes our bite-sized learning session on sequencing viral genomes. We look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you.